No, 25. five twenty one twenty five. Twenty five. I'm skipping a little bit of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Five twenty five. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many of the physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And, the whole. and straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing him in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng thee, and knowest thou who, and, and you ask who touched me? And he looked around and see that, see her that had done the thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that, she, that what, what was done in her, came and fell, and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. <clears throat> Most of us have heard this story before, but we're going to show you what the Word of God says about you and I today and how we can receive the same kind of healing in our life. It's important for us to understand this because if we catch this, it'll change your whole life. Okay. Last week we talked about the understanding of the conscious and the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind being feminine, right? So if you're going to talk to your subconscious mind, what do you got to do, Neil? You got to give her a little romance. We got to go out and make <laughs> We got to do, you got to, because why? I want to tell you why. The subconscious mind does not understand how to be conscious. It only knows what it's been programmed to do. I'm going to prove it to you. Try to remember to breathe with your conscious mind. <laughs> you can't, right? Because why? What runs your breathing? So. The subconscious mind, okay? <clears throat> so it's the same thing with everything in life. Many times the reason why you're struggling in life is because you're try you're, you don't have a good relationship with the feminine component of yourself. I'm not going to go into the whole thing because I'll be here for a half hour. You're, you're struggling with the, with the feminine component in yourself and you don't know how to romance and to change the programming. Because what does the programming of the subconscious mind want? Security. It wants to feel secure. wants to make sure everything's okay. It, its programming is based on what it was programmed with, not what was right and wrong. Because what do we normally do? I know what to do is right, but I find myself doing that which is wrong. I keep messing up in my life. I got all these problems in my life. Okay? This story that we just read is a perfect description of how to use the conscious and the subconscious mind. So that you can begin to change your life. <clears throat> now, I drew a strange drawing on the board today. Everybody recognize it? From those of us who have been with us for a while, who, what is it? That's a house. It's a house. Bread, I see bread, I love bread. Yeah, you love bread? Oh man. Okay. Bread and butter. I see a moose or yeah. jelly. You see a moose? Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, it's <laughs> this is the tabernacle in the wilderness. <laughs> oh, okay. We only studied it for a year. <laughs> All right, you got the holy of holies. You got the holy place, and then you have the outer court, right? Mm -hmm. So listen very carefully today, because this is a depiction of you. This is your brain, let's just say, okay? This is your subconscious mind. This is your conscious mind, okay? And this is your world, okay, that you live in, all right? Now... If we're going to enter into the subconscious mind and start to change the programming that's in it, we have to go through a process, don't we? Don't we? Mm -hmm. 
So, this process out here tells you what? Don't do that. Well, first of all, what happens here? Anybody remember? On this altar. It's a terrible depiction of it, but it's an altar. <laughs> right? We'll put a little smoke here. Because what's burning on that altar? So burning. Right? No incense burning on that altar. Myrrh? No. Animals. <laughs> Flesh. You know what I mean? You know the animal? This animal that most of the time is unruly, okay, and does whatever it wants, okay? What do you have to do with that animal? Burn it up. You've got to make a, you've got to make a sacrifice. Right? In order to get, now, I don't want you going out there on, you know, <laughs> university drive and start to do sacrifices to local animals, okay? We're talking about spiritually now, all right? Spiritually, you gotta, you got to recognize this animal. And you got to say, you know something? We're going to burn you up. You are, you are going to become a sweet-smelling sacrifice before God. And that's what God smells. The animal sacrifice. Remember the Old Testament is full of animal sacrifices. But now, God has brought it into the spiritual realm. So where is our animal today? What's going to be sacrificed? Our, our ways. Your ways? Our ways of doing things. Okay, anybody else? Um, <clears throat> wait, what was, the, what was it you said again? What, what was going to be sacrificed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens out here in, our, in real life? Let's talk about real life. You're getting burned up. Are you starting to get the picture? Mm -hmm. Problems are taking place in your life. Mm -hmm. so People aren't reacting the way you want them to react. React. That's happening out here. Right? And what does it do to you? You have a pity party, you're upset, you get angry. You, yeah, all these things oh. are about, right? And we, most of the time, what do we do with those animals? We think it's everybody else's fault but whose? Ours. Ours. <laughs> it's always the other person. In the scripture today, you heard that Jesus <clears throat> had sent messengers out to go before him into Samaria, right? Remember that scripture? And then what happened? They refused to let Jesus in. What did the disciples do? Like John. <laughs> I mean, when you read the scripture, it's funny. It's kind of funny because he says, would you like us to call down fire on them and destroy them? <laughs> because they wouldn't let you in town? <laughs> did you hear that scripture today? But this is what we want to do in that area. We want to say, you know something, all those people out there that are giving me a hard time are really pissing me off. And I want to do what with them? Burn them up. Burn them up. That's what John wanted to do. That's why he called him John, son of thunder. <laughs> okay, he wanted lightning and thunder to come down and destroy them all. So what I'm trying to show you is, is that this is the consequence. This is what you're going to start to sacrifice. And what did Jesus say to them? No, he actually reprimanded them for that kind of thinking. Okay, that's what we want to do. Take a look at your life, ask yourself the question, do I, what, am I going to sacrifice out there? Or am I going to start to say, you know something? I got to put myself on that altar. I got to take a look at myself. So out here, in this outer court, Everything that you see in life is your conscious being pushed out. Do you know what that means? Your conscious being pushed out. What you see on the outside is really only a reflection of what's going on on the inside. This is a tough teaching, but it's a powerful teaching because if you learn it, you're going to change your life. So the first thing you've got to recognize is who? Yourself. yourself. Who you are inside. Not that person that's driving you crazy. And what, what happens to our flesh when it starts to go that way? I want to kill the guy. I want to kill the girl. I'm going to kill that job. I'm going to, I don't like my circumstances. Right? All, and all this is depicting what? The facts of life. Are you following me now? These are the facts. The fact is, you're a pain in the ass. That's the fact of life. Sure, the fact is... is he, no, 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 I don't mean to point at him. I'm looking at Arlene. Thanks, <clears throat> the fact is, I have no money. The fact is, there's bills to be paid. The fact is, this is the problem I got, and what you're telling me is crazy. 
That's the facts. Correct? So all these wonderful teachings that you give us, Father Paul, I mean Father Leo, on Sunday, they're really worthless because on Monday morning I gotta face the facts. So if I believe the facts, right, what's gonna happen to me? You're gonna fall dumb. victim to what they are. Bingo. And you're gonna be they become the facts. I am broke. broke. I am Miserable. Miserable. I am... Are you following me so far? This is a throwback from last week's teaching. I am this. And now you personify and you push out exactly what you see. I'm going to give you an example. When you watch television, what are you actually seeing? Do you see the real people? Mm -hmm. Actors. You don't? You see actors? I want you, the next time you hear a radio program in your car, you're driving in the radio, and I want you to take the radio apart and find the announcer inside of it. <laughs> so I find the guy who's singing the song. Do you think you'll find him? Not in the radio. No, why? It's a recording. Because it's only what? It's only a, rare program. a program. A program. It's only a program. Are you starting to get the picture? The one inside of our brain. Guess what you are? Program, program. You are a program. And guess what you have the ability to do? Change the program. You have the, ch you, uh, guess who cannot change their program? Who cannot? An animal. Oh. That's why the animal has to be sacrificed. Because you have five components of your soul, three that you can manage. Are we following so far? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Okay, so you're going to sacrifice the animal and you're going to come to this laver here. You know what this laver is? Anybody remember? Mirror. It's a mirror. It's exactly right. And where, who, where do the mirrors come from? Do you remember from our teachings? Where does it come yeah, from? Yeah, where did those mirrors come from? They came uh, from a very specific place. Up top? No. What, you mean the mirrors? Mirrors, yeah. They were, they were collected <laughs> by the priesthood for, to make this laver. Who did they collect them from? People, the women. The and where did the women get the labors, the, the uh, mirrors from? They took them from the Egyptian women who used to put on their makeup. Okay. Okay? So what do you look in here? What are you going to be looking at? Your vanity. Who you really are inside. What you see yourself. The facts of life. Right? What are the facts? The fact is, hey, this is what I look like. But if you sacrifice this, sacrifice, that's the sacrifice, Jesus went to the cross to do what? To sacrifice your flesh that was bound for hell so that you could start to look at yourself and have entrance into here, which we're going to go to in a minute. So what is this? This is your conscious mind, okay, that is now going to start, when it's sacrificed properly, it's going to take a look at itself and go, hmm, who am I? Who am I really? You want to be prosperous in your life? It's not the other person's fault. Whose fault is it? Because this is you. This isn't somebody else. This is you. You have the choice and the opportunity to change and to make your own opportunity in life. Let me tell you something. Everything that is available to you is already created. Does it have to be created then? No. It's already created. You know what that means? <coughs> that everything you need to sustain yourself already exists. What's the problem? You, you don't know it. You believe the facts. And the facts, oh, let me ask you a question. When you're sitting around and you, and you actually observe your thoughts, are they Negative mostly or positive mostly? They're negative. They're negative. Why? Because you refuse to do what? Burn them. Burn Sacrifice. Them. Sacrifice them. Say, so you know something? No. I have everything I need. I have the prosperity in my life that I need. So in order to be able to get into this place, <clears throat> God has to start to teach me how to enter into it. 
So I'm going to sacrifice. So if I'm sacrificing this, is it really this that I'm sacrificing? What is it? Negative thoughts. The, program, the, the programs. Old programming. old programming and negative thoughts. You're beginning to take a look at and sacrifice. Now, this is, okay, coming into your conscious mind. All right? You're making a choice. Are you all following so far? Mm -hmm. You're making a choice. Okay? And if that choice is going to help you, how it, what, is, what has to take place? You have to consciously do what? Take a look at your who? Self. Self. Now I know we don't like to do that because I want to blame everything on somebody else. I want to blame everything on my father and my mother. I want to blame everything on my circumstances. I want to blame everything on everybody else. But who? You. But me. Because the minute I take responsibility for it, guess what's going to happen to you? Not gonna like it. Well, you, it'd be painful because you don't like the fire. You don't want to see yourself. We don't like to see ourselves. But you're going to be set free. You're going to have freedom in your life. And what's that freedom going to look like? So we're going to enter now in. So we've sacrificed those thoughts that are negative. We're sacrificing the... We're taking a look at ourselves for what we really are. Now we're going to go through this curtain. Okay. And in the curtain, you got the, you got this little light here, okay? You know what that's called? The golden candlestick. It's got seven lights on top of it, all right? And we're going to call that understanding because it's the light of understanding. So what kind of understanding are you going to be able to have? Hold it right there. Then you have bread in there. Now it's not, you know, Wonder Bread. It's better than Wonder Bread. <laughs> <clears throat> if you eat this bread the word of God says you will have everlasting life let me ask you a question can you understand what it means to have everlasting life no can you honestly no so let me ask you another question do you have the ability right now if you closed your eyes and imagine yourself on in New York City. Yeah. So what part of your brain has the ability to be anywhere? Where? Imagination. Your imagination. Your imagination understands what it's to have. To be able to see something that goes on forever. Right? It doesn't totally con it can't it can't quantify it, but it can conceive of it. The human brain is the only one that truly understands that it's going to die. A dog doesn't know. He can't conceive of himself as understanding what it is to die. He might know he's dying at the time, right? But he doesn't understand that I'm going to die in 20 years. You know what I mean? Or 15 years or 18, whatever dogs live, you know. Right? Are you following me so far? So if you're going to begin to understand this, how are you going to change yourself? So you got bread, you got light, and you got incense. What is incense? Anybody remember what it is? Praises of God. The praises of God's people. All right? So you got bread. What else is bread? Food. It's, so it's something that can live, Gosh. that it, it represents eternity. It represents the face of God. You know what else it represents? It represents food. That's correct. Substance. That, what, and what are you normally needing in your life? Substance. If you don't have substance, will you live? No. <laughs> Right? And what are we always struggling for in our life? Good substance. <laughs> and we got a lot of pressures on us to make sure that the substance is there. Or we get mad, we get angry. Are you following me so far? So how are we going to get the substance that God has for us already? Because now you're acting as a priest. You're going into the garden. Alright? And as you go into the garden, alright, this is like going into a garden. It's like going onto a mountain, and it's like going into your heart. All right, this is the emotive heart, which is the the emotional heart. Okay, so you're gonna go into there. You gotta have what? You gotta be able to see. You gotta be able to be supplied, and you gotta be able to have what? The praises of God's people. Okay, are you following me so far? So. 
If you eat this bread, you will live forever. You will be sustained forever. If you have the light, you will have what? What is light? Can you kill light? No. What is light? It's energy, right? Can you kill energy? No. What energy goes on for? Ever. Ever. Are you, follow, are you starting to follow me so far? So we live out here, we live in a limited access to life. When we start to live in here, what happens? We start to gain unlimited access to provision in our life. Access to provision. Here's the problem. There's this really huge curtain in between here that is covering this. And you can only go there, how? Once a year. Once a year. And it, only the high priest can go in. Hmm. Isn't that odd? I was watching a show yesterday about what you see on television. And there's only three colors on a TV screen, by the way. Anybody know what it is? Green, it's blue, blue, green, and red. I had two and out of three. Blue, green, and red. So what happens if you see a yellow lemon? A mixture of colors. What? A mixture of colors. It's a mixture of colors. And what is it really, Mary, when you're looking at a screen? Anybody, do you know? Are you really seeing a lemon? It's just a picture. It's a picture, but it's really a wavelength, isn't it? It's really a wave, or, or you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a wavelength that is combining certain colors to achieve a color, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and what your brain is really seeing is what? The wavelength, and it's converting it to color or to a lemon. Are you following me now? What does that tell you about life? That what you're seeing out here is what? Not real. It's not real. It's an illusion that you've interpreted where? In your brain. In your brain. You were trained that a lemon is yellow. Do you know that the brain, that do you know that color and actuality does not exist? I know that sounds odd, but the only reason you see color is because your brain puts color on it. How? By the wavelength that bounces off of whatever angle that it's coming from. Okay, if you studied art, if you went to the art institute, don't they teach you that? This is not brain science, this is facts. That means that you actually are painting it based on what you see and your brain is interpreting that color. If you meet someone who, who's colorblind, right, what are they seeing? Black and white. Black green. and white or whatever colors green. they cannot see. They're missing certain colors, right? Yep. And where is that happening? Is it in their head? Are you seeing that? Many times if you want to discover about these kind of things, find out where a problem has a problem and you can begin to see how it actually works. This is important because everything that you're seeing on the outside world is what? Is you pushed out. So what you're seeing is what you created because that's what you're... So if I'm going to change it, what am I going to do? you got to change the inside. But here's the problem. This curtain right here. Only can get in there one person at a time. Once a year. And that's the, only the high priest can go in. Who is the high priest? Anybody? We are. You are? God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. You go next year. <laughs> Jesus is the high priest. Oh. See, this is the work of salvation. You see, most people are, even when they say they're saved, or they went to the altar, and they still live, and, and, and you don't see a changed life, without a changed life, there's no evidence that what happened? The high priest went in and made atonement for your sins. And when he makes atonement for your sins, right, what is he doing? What is your sin? Sin means simply that you missed the mark. Am I getting to... Two? Um, you're, you're following it so far? Sin means you missed the mark. The only way you can truly make that, sacrifice, that, that change in your life is by allowing the high priest to do what? Come into your life and change what? Program. The programming. The inner programming. And how do you do that? 
following in his word? Not just following his word. His word is truth um, and life. We know that. Right. But I'm going to get more right down to earth here. Because I know that as soon as you walk out that door, something's going to happen to you, and you're going to forget everything I said. That's one way to do it, but how do you do it? What is it? What is it that has to be changed? The ability to do what? Imagine. To so. imagine. Gold star for me. <laughs> so when I'm looking at somebody, I'm looking at an impossible situation, right? I have to be able to do what, Mary? Rearrange it in my imagination so I can push out a new who? New you. New you. <laughs> <laughs> right? You want to push out a new you. Who are you? That's what we talked about last week. Who am I? Aren't you part of the existing one? Didn't you come from God himself? Weren't you known from the councils of eternity? And he's been training you since you were born how to live as a spiritual being, which has always been, by the way, in a what? Material world so that you could learn how to live your life. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to prosper. He wants God to move in your life. He wants those things in your life, but he will not take away your free will. Where truly is your free will? In your mind. It's in your mind. And where in your mind? Imagination. It's not just in, you know, it's in your, in your, so in your mind. conscious mind is your free will. To make, I decided, I am going to. It's a, you have made a conscious decision. And we read that when we see the circumstances, we're not supposed to call down fire and get rid of everybody. <laughs> which much as we'd like to. I know Arlene, she even says to me on a certain situation in my life, you got to start praying to get rid of that person. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, no, I don't understand why, because it definitely makes sense. But no, he doesn't want that. What does he want? He wants us to understand that what we're seeing in life is ourself pushed out. Do you understand that when you, I'm looking at each one of you right now, right? I'm looking at you, each one of you. And what am I actually seeing? You. I'm seeing you, right? I'm seeing a picture of you. No, because uh, uh, you're, seeing, you're seeing us on the outside. Cause Why? Conscious. Because our consciousness pushes it out. Everything in life is pushed out. You are pushing out, you are broadcasting and doing what? And receiving at the exact same time. Am I getting too deep for you? No. You're like a projector. You know? You're a projector and you're a receiver at the same exact time. You are projecting out who you are. And what are you doing? You're receiving from what? From your subconscious mind. And what is your subconscious mind telling you? The programming that it was, re it was programmed to do. Always, the subconscious mind is going to be feminine. That means that feminine, okay, is going to do what? Feminine will always actualize what you program it to do. Okay? That's why the Word of God says, we talked about it last week, it says that you should, you know, um, that if two or more are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst, and whatever you ask for in prayer will be granted unto you. Now, we come to that prayer, okay? We can be really believing it while you're here. But as soon as you walk out the door, what happens to us? We don't believe it anymore because why? We stepped out of this area. And we went back to here. And we're not willing to say, you know something? I'm going to believe that. Listen to the woman with the issue of blood. Listen to what it says. I want to bring it to two places. First of all, she touches the helm of his garment, right? And this is what it says. And straight away the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt, listen to the word, she felt her body that it was healed of the plague. Do you hear that? What does that tell you about when you reach out and you touch the subconscious mind? You've got to do what? You got to feel it. When a woman talks to you about something, what do they tell you about? Logical stuff? No, about their feelings, <laughs> right? And what do they complain mostly about? 
You don't understand my thoughts. No, my feelings. Isn't that what happens? That same component is where? In us. In us. And what happens when we see it in this world here? We've accomplished it very well inside here. <laughs> because we're not listening to ourselves. We're not hearing who we really are inside. That's why some of the greatest gifts in life are who? The very people around you. Because they are a mirror to do what? To show you who you are. So when, when Neil has Mary mad at him, what do I always say, Neil? So. Yeah, you go, he is just absolutely <laughs> crazy. And what I say to Mary, I'm just using these examples. She happened to be right in front of me. Okay? When I have Arlene mad at me, what do I got to do? Look at yourself. Yeah, and what do I normally do? <laughs> Call down fire! <laughs> okay, you follow me now? Right? So, so as soon as I call down fire, what have I done? What did, the, what did Jesus say to the disciples? He reprimanded them for the action. That's what will happen to you. You will be reprimanded. You won't win. God grows little green apples. You will not win. So, is it important that we learn on the outside? It certainly helps. But where is it really going to take place? Inside. Inside. And is it the other person's fault? No. no. It's your fault. Because why? You programmed it. You consciously program it how? Through your environment, through what you believed, through what you always believed, through what you thought was the way it should be, and what happened to us? We screwed up. You gotta take responsibility for it. Once you take responsibility for all those thoughts, then you do what? Listen to what Jesus said. He sent out messengers to Samaria, and they refused to accept him, why? Because he was headed to where? Jerusalem. What is a messenger? An angel. What? An angel. An angel. And what can an angel be? Anybody. 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 <laughs> Could be a pastor. Right? He sent out messenger. He sent out a message. And what did the Samaritans do? They refused to see him. What happens to us? The same exact thing. Because why? We don't like your intentions. And where was his intention to go? To Jerusalem. Are you following me so far? And where is Jerusalem? Jerusalem holds what? The Word of God. So, I want to prosper. We understand the process now. We've only talked about this little. This Jesus goes in, and he actually will bring you into that place in your life where you need to be. Jesus does not live outside of you. I'm going to repeat it. He does not live outside of you. As much When you pray, you pray to a God who is, Oh dear God, that's far away. And we hope that He hears us. And then we wonder why He didn't hear us. Well, I just showed you, not only does He hear you, okay, but He's there with you always, when you've accepted him into your life, into your heart, into your what? He comes to live where? Into your heart. And what is your heart? Uh, <clears throat> is it your logical part of yourself? No. Feelings. It's your feelings. feelings. It's your emotions. And where do they mostly reside? In your subconscious mind. Oh. You follow me so far? The programming. So when you worship at the wrong throne, you're worshiping at the throne of a, a, of, a, a, of, of a throne that is a programming that is what? A God that is not from the kingdom of Almighty God, but it is one that you created and you pushed out. And then you wonder why we got problems in our life. In all of Scripture, you will find, especially in the Old Testament, you will see what? They got destroyed by the Amorites and the Hittites came in and savaged their land. Uh, you, you know these stories, right? The Hittites and the Perizzites and the, and the Canaanites. Who are those, Ed? The enemies of Israel. Who is Israel? Israel is your soul. Pushed out. Israel is who you really are. And guess what? 
Israel was to be served by who? The people? By the world. By everything that the outside was to serve Israel. If you're Israel, why isn't the world serving you? In fact, what are you mostly doing 99.9% .9 of the serving time? Serving the world. Serving the world. And what is it doing to you? Putting you into bondage. Right? It says... To you, you're in debt. You're this. You're that. Are you following me now? And what have you done? You personify that. He says, you're right. How long did it take for the children of Israel to get out of Egypt? 40 years. It took only 10 plagues and a small amount of time to get out of Egypt. But how long did it take to get Egypt out of Israel? 40 years. To change this programming, it could take a couple years of consciously making a decision in your life, no, this is what my life is going to look like. And you begin, you don't throw out everybody around you, you don't make those kind of changes. You make the changes within. If you make them within, what is the logical conclusion? It's going to happen without. And how do you got to know it? You got to feel it. She felt that virtue came into her and that she was made whole. Guess what? If she was a woman with the issue of blood, could she have a child? Yes. She no. can? No. No. Her womb is not correct. It's bad. She cannot actualize, right? I'm going to get into a little sex education, right? You can't actualize the sperm that comes into it. And it cannot produce life. Her womb was damaged. The womb is the subconscious mind. I'm getting a little deep now, <clears throat> if you didn't notice. <laughs> a woman, okay, who is operating properly, okay, will do what? She will actualize what the husband, who is the head of the household, will do. If you, in your inner self, the husband part of you is not the head of the household, then what will take place? Chaos. Chaos. Right? And in this world, what happens to us? We already know. In this world, most of the time, the women have to take control. Because why? Because the, the, men, the men are the bumbling idiots. Okay? Because we don't know what we want. We don't know how to, we don't know how to do this process. But I'm teaching you that you've got to do it from within yourself. Each one of us, Mary, who's a woman, has to know that her high priest where, lives where? In our heart. On the, on the throne heart. of your heart. And what are you going to do with that high priest? He's going to do what? He treats you as what? He's your high priest. He's your husband. What does that make you? Wife. The wife. Bride. The bride. Isn't it any wonder that the Bible talks about the brideship? Because what is your job? To actualize. That means you're going to produce what? His children. And what is his children? Peace. Love. Joy, blessing, prosperity. Are you following me so far? This is really amazing stuff. If you catch it, that means that you're. That means that you have. We walk around broke, problems, thinking that everything's going wrong. But in actuality, you decide what you want to see, and then what you're going to do. You're going to impregnate who. The subconscious mind, and you're going to have to romance it. When Adam was produced Eve, did he happen while he was awake or asleep? Awake. He was? Oh, I'm sorry. He was asleep, by the way. Yeah. Right? He put Adam to sleep, yeah. and he formed woman from where? His side, and produced Eve. Okay? You and I, we need to learn how to begin to produce life instead of death. You know what we do? We sit, it's now about 10.30 at night, right? After we watch two hours of television, we've sort of blinded ourselves off, right? We put ourselves into a comatose state so that we don't have to face all the problems of life. Some people use drugs. 
Some people do other th whatever they do that makes them feel better about themselves and what happens? Then they go to sleep and now you just did what? You just programmed your brain for what? Nothing. For or the you're future. Gonna wake up with it again in the morning. You're going to wake up again in the morning and you're going to get exactly what you implanted. That's why it's at night usually that a husband and wife rumble in the hay. <laughs> to actualize. But I'm telling you about it now in the spiritual realm. Do not violate the spiritual realm. Can you, can you see in your mind's eye right now the spiritual realm? Are you able to see it? Mary, can you see the spiritual realm right now? You, are you sure? Only say yes if you know you do. I want to know you're catching it. What? I'm catching it. Big time. Okay. Can you see it? Are you able to see the spiritual <laughs> realm right now? Yeah. You gotta see it. I want you to get this. I, I got yeah. it. I hope so, because I'm gonna be looking for I'm what? Fruit. Actualization. You won't see it. I wanna see mm -hmm. fruit. Fruit's coming next I, week. <laughs> I wanna see fruit. <laughs> Alright? How long does it take for a human to come forth? Nine months. How long is it for a horse? Six months. Twelve. How long for a chicken? Uh, nine weeks. Four I think weeks. it's about 27 days or something like that. Four weeks. <laughs> right? So, what are we talking about? It's the principle of a seed, isn't it? Yeah. And what does the seed have in it? Potential fruit. Seeds. It's got the potential future, to do what? Future, to produce. Future, future. And what do you got to do with that seed for it to produce? Put it in plant it. You got to plant it where? In the ground. ground. And what is the ground? Darkness. It's the pro. It's the. It's already been pre-programmed to actualize what you planted. God is not mocked. A man reapeth what he soweth. That's the word of God. So when you sit there, well, this is God's fault. God really gave me a bad rap. No, He gave you seeds to plant, and you can decide what you want in those seeds, and you can decide how you want those seeds planted, and you can put them into the garden, and you can make a choice in your life. And then you can begin to ignore the facts because the facts are only Esau telling you that I'm going to kill you. Right? There's Jacob and Esau. Weren't they twins? This is why it's so important to learn to read these stories. Because when you know these stories, when I'm teaching you it, you can go, aha, now I understand why that story was there. Twins, Paul, they were twins. It came out at the same time. I think they had wonder powers together. <laughs> Oh, they had wonder powers, right? All right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, is that you're going to now look at your life, all right? And you're going to say, I'm going, I'm looking at my life. I see my life. I see, I see my wife, my children, my bills, my problems. That is not real. What's real is you pushed it out. In science, it's called, I can't even say it right, Coella, Coeli or something like that. You know what I'm talking about, Meryl? Has to do with colors. I don't know about that. Animal. Koali. Koala. Koali or Koala something. Bear. Koali. I can't even say it. But anyway, um, what you see in your brain, okay, is really just an image of what you're seeing on the outside because you produced from your brain what's on the outside. It's not the other way around. We have bought off on the lie that says what you see is what it is. That is not true. It is a lie. That's what the devil would have you believe. And how do I know that? In the very beginning, when you meet the devil, he's a serpent, right? And what does he say? I, I uh, did God stuff. say you couldn't eat of the tree? Trees in the garden? What you, he said we can't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If we do, we're going to die. You won't die. In fact, you'll become as a God knowing good from bad, you'll know right, you'll know everything. Oh, really? You'll become as a god. Did they need to know that? No. Were they already like gods? Yeah. Didn't they already have everything? Yeah. So what he was doing was is he was trying to imprint from the outside in. What God does is he imprints from the inside and you push it out. Because why? You are what? A reflection or image. You, you are. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The born of what? All creation. That means within you, you are a participant in the act of creation. 
He is waiting to see what you will call it. Go and read it. It says, let's see what man, let's find a helpmate for him. We'll parade all the animals before him and we'll see what he calls them. It's your job to make the call. And guess what? Have we been good at it? No. no. Terrible. Because we called it and it ate us. <laughs> we called it and it destroyed us. What are you going to begin to call it? I haven't picked on you, Lynn. <laughs> We're going to call it, okay, what the Word of God says it is, not what the facts are. Are you following me now? So what are we going to do when we go home today? We're going to take a first, an honest look at ourselves. Not a mysterious look, not a, oh, well, you know how you have people out there, well, I'm going to call it because God's going to bring it to me. You know what I mean? Never meet the, that, right? Name it and claim it. Okay, those are outside concepts trying to reflect on the inside. I'm teaching you to go from the inside and then call it from the inside and it is established for you already. Everything you need. Problems in business? Take a look at it from the inside. Ask yourself, why am I seeing this? I know I've mentioned that to you before. You don't go to yourself, hey, you're bad. I'm going to call down fire on you. <laughs> right? No, instead you're going to go, what? Why am I seeing this? What am I producing inside myself that is causing me to see what I'm seeing? If I'm seeing lack in my life, am I able to reach out and to touch Jesus? To touch the hem of his garment? To touch... The hem of his garment, by the way, was the teat seats on the, on the, it's called the wings. When you touched it, you were touching the law of God, the law of the Spirit. And when she touched it, she felt it, right? And then what did Jesus say to her? He said what? Who touched mine? Who touched me? And then blah, 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 right? But then in the end, he looks at her and says, daughter, I healed you. Is that what it says? No. It says, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Did you ever notice that Jesus always said, whenever there's a healing and someone questions him about it, he always says what? Faith. Thy faith has made you whole. What is faith? If this faith is so important, what is it? It's the, it's the ability to see things that are not as if they were. It's the ability to be able to know those things from the end, from the beginning. And guess what it is held in? Confidence. Your confidence to know. Faith is the confidence that God is able. And the only way you're going to be able to see those things that are not as if they were is how? Confidence. With your imagination. Right? You're going to enter in from the facts. You're going to say no to them. You're going to take a look at yourself of who you really are inside and say, why am I seeing this? Right? I'm going to look at the mirrors of vanity of the woman that put on the makeup from Egypt. I'm going to enter through the first veil and I'm going to gain understanding. The light of the golden candlestick. Aha! I'm going to have understanding. Jesus is in the midst of the golden candlestick. And then I'm going to have the bread of life. Do you know what another word for bread is? War. I'm going to have the substance to go to war. And then I'm going to sing God's praises. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 47. Those of you can find it, who have it. And Neil can go quick and you can read it. I'm fine with this little Bible. Like <laughs> Deuteronomy <laughs> is the fifth book in the Bible. What chapter? Wow, oh, I got uh, What chapter? Yeah. Deuteronomy. Yep. Yeah. 28.47 There. Okay, go ahead. Whoever's first goes. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. That's it. Okay. Do you hear that? The re the, this In this scripture, before the scriptures, all the blessings you receive and all the scriptures after it are, guess what? All the curses that come into your life. All right? Thou servest not the Lord. So we're going to serve the Lord with what? Joyfulness. And, and gladness. gladness. Why? 
For the abundance of things to come. No, the ab not the abundance of abundance things to come. Of all things. Because of the abundance of all things. That's a present tense statement. Do you have the abundance in your life already? Yes. Is it coming later on? Yes. No, it's already here. Oh, it's here, okay. Yes. Okay. What's the problem? Us, faith. We don't see it. Belief. We don't see it. And how do you get it? Thou service not the Lord. Why? Ed? Because of? Because thou serveth not the Lord thy with? God with joyfulness and with oh, gladness heart. of heart. And gladness of heart. When the woman touched Jesus's with the with her faith, she felt that she was made whole. That's from her heart. When you serve God because of the abundance of all things, right? With joyfulness and gladness, what's going on? Serving is the same word that is used for doing this process. It's called a bed. It is what a priest does. You, as a soul of Israel, is, are a priest. You have the ability, when you've accepted Christ into your life, and you've been born again, and you've received baptism, to be able to make these choices, you are now empowered to be able to accomplish this. You got to sacrifice the old thinking, right? Be renewed in your thinking, the Word of God says, right? You are empowered to become what? The sons and daughters of God, of Elohim. You see yourself as you really are. You receive the light of understanding inside. Now, you get the bread that gives you the ability to go to war. And then you do this with joy and gladness. Because why? Of the abundance of all things in my life. Are we getting this now? Yeah. This is deep stuff, guys. But I'm looking. I, I'm believing. Okay, my facts tell me I'm telling this to the wrong people. Uh-uh. <laughs> right? Because why? What did you tell me when you first walked in the door? And I made a promise to you. I'm keeping it right now, aren't I? Mm-hmm. You told me the facts. Mm -hmm. And what did the facts tell you? Doesn't look that good. you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> right? In your home, in your job, the whole world is looking right. Mm -hmm. The facts are telling me this. Am I telling you that you should believe the facts? No. no. What am I asking you to do? Reprogram it. Pro uh, pro change the program. Because know? why? Because it's not. So what, how, do you how do you change the facts? Um, By taking an honest them. look at yourself. Right. Not deny yourself. Not say, well, I'm not going to believe that. No, it's real. It feels real. You broke your arm. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah. Does it hurt? Oh, yeah. Right? Do you believe that you can be healed? Oh, yeah. Do you believe that you can be healed? Yep, I've already seen it. Do you believe that you can be healed? I'm yes. I'm healed. I'm healed. I am healed. Okay? So what are you doing? You are rearranging the facts, and you got to do it from where? Within. From within. Not from without. Prosperity is yours already. Because why? The abundance of all things. Because guess what? Everything that you need in life has already been created. All you're doing is doing what? Re-bringing it into your life where it's supposed to be. The problem is, is that the programming in your life has made it so that you don't believe it. And so if you're going to reproduce within yourself and your womb, which is your subconscious mind is going to begin to produce something new. What's going to take place? You're going to have to have the high priest come in and truly allow you into the Holy of Holies. Where, watch this, you ready? Where the hot coals that come from this altar, which is the sacrifice, he takes it and puts it into a little pan, the priest. Everybody, you guys know this story, right? And what does he do with it, Ed? You're shaking your head, so I'm asking you. Watching your lip. No. He brings it into the showbread. He brings it to the showbread or to the altar of incense? Your altar of incense, my fault. And what does he put on the altar of incense? The showbread carries the table, has the what on it? Table. The incense. Okay? You're going to take the incense and you're going to put it on top of the coals that come from here. If you do it wrong and the sacrifice doesn't come from here, what will happen to you? You will burn up. You will be destroyed. 
follow it. But if you do it from the sacrifice, who's the one that actually sacrificed himself on this? Jesus. And here, where does he live? Inside of you. He lives in you. Doesn't the word of God say he's in you? He's not outside of you. Stop praying to a God on the outside of you, Mary. And start praying to the God that lives in you. So you're going to do what? You're going to serve God a bed, right? That means to till. It means to garden. We all like to garden, right? We're all expert gardeners in here. <laughs> None of us are good gardeners. But inside of us is this garden. So when the bad thoughts come around and you want to produce fruit from this grapevine, you remember the vine, right? God gave you a scripture, didn't he? And what are you going to do with that scripture? You're going to follow it. Who's the vine? We are. Jesus is the vine. Who's the branches? Oh, yeah, we, are. we are. And you receive your life from what? The vine. The vine. And if you have bad things that are on the vine, what are you going to do with it? Trim them off. If you don't trim them off, what happens to the great, your fruit? It, all goes bad. it doesn't produce. It produces weak fruit. That's why you have to have a husbandman. What do they call it? You know, a permanent goes out there and he keeps the grapes trimmed, makes sure they're on the trellises so that it can produce fruit. That's what you got to do. So when the negative comes along and says, Oh, Neil, you've got a crazy woman. Your job is not going really good. All the problems are happening. I'm just using Neil as an example. I think we can all relate to it, right? Mm -hmm. You got to do what with it? Put it on the altar and say, uh, Hold on a minute. Start now. Yep. I'm going to get my scissors out. Snip. Start to trim. Put it on the altar. Take a look at yourself. Why am I seeing this? Enter in and begin to eat from the eternal things. These are eternal representations. Are you following me now? That begin to understand what? We can understand it through our imagination. And then when you enter in here, you change the programming and you've now entered into the kingdom of Almighty God and you've been empowered. Are you seeing it now? Mm -hmm. So everything in your life is actually a tool to enter. And I have a situation in my life right now where I, I, I can't wait for the day when I can hand him and shake his hand and say, thank you. Thank you. Because of the pain that you caused me to understand this. He taught actually the things that help you get to where you're supposed to be. I told that to Neil years ago and he thought I was nuts. And Mary, remember? <laughs> mm -hmm. it's you pushed out I'm, I know I'm repeating myself but I really want you to get it because I don't want to be I want to be able to say I gave this information to people that really will use it because I'm going to tell you if you use this Neil calls me the other day and says Jay we're going to do it we're going to make you be able to retire mm -hmm. well if you only way I will be able to retire <laughs> is if you get this <laughs> not my, I'm not going to retire because you had made more money. Because if you made more money and didn't learn this lesson, then, I, then I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> I want you to be able to do what? I want you to go out and say you would not believe how the kingdom of God works, my friend. Are you following me now? Mm -hmm. And let me show you how it does it because I'm a testimony to how it works. You too, Lynn. I know you say to yourself, well, this is great words, and I love listening to Fa Leah, but this doesn't really work in my life. No, it works in your life. Take a look at what your life is. It's you pushed out. Okay? Take a serious look at our lives and work it. Work it. Begin to be active participants in your garden and begin to say, I want my garden to look like this. This is what we're going to be learning this summer, guys. Yeah, I was just going to say that.